So g'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video I'm actually in an ironbark forest in northeast Victoria. I'm currently looking for the critically endangered swift parrot that's been reported in this area. Whilst I look for that parrot, I thought it'd be it'd make a great video if I just chat about the joy of wildlife photography. You know, what is it about this form of photography that is so addictive and so enjoyable? So I really want this video to inspire you and encourage you to pick up whatever camera you have, head out to your local nature spot and just have a go. So the first thing I want to emphasize is you do not need the best gear to enjoy wildlife photography. Use whatever camera you have available to you. For me, I'm actually going to use the very first camera and lens I ever used for birding. And that is a 2009 40D, 10 megapixels and a 405.6. This kit will probably cost you around 600 US used. So a very budget affordable kit. Okay, so I've got my lens, got my camera. Now we just have to go and find some birds. And this is probably the second thing that's amazing about wildlife photography is I have no idea what I'm gonna encounter. I've got no idea of what birds or what subjects I'm gonna photograph. And that's the excitement, isn't it? We just don't know what we're gonna get. So let's go and see what we can find. So I've just stopped here because there's a beautiful wattle that I want to photograph and I think this is probably a good point just to mention something that uh, is worth learning when you get into wildlife photography and that's not to fall into the social media trap. What do I mean by that? <laughs> when I started out uh, I was taking photos and posting them on a forum and I got some really encouraging feedback and as any human we love that feedback and I started to crave the attention of these good photos. So when I go out into the field like this all I was trying to do was get a photo that would get likes and give me some sort of attention. And what that ends up happening is when there's no birds about, like there's not at the moment, you start to sort of not enjoy the process because you just want that photo. I would often go home upset or disappointed because I didn't get that social media post that everyone's going to love. That can only take the joy out of your photography, trust me. So I've managed to learn to step back and start to enjoy the process and just take in the surroundings. I'm in a beautiful forest. I'm the only one here. I can hear birds all around me. I've stumbled across this beautiful flowering plant. So let's take a photo of it. Let's enjoy this moment and uh, listen to the birds and take a photo. So I've got my 40D and I just need to set my exposure because we've got bright sunlight. I'm at ISO 400 and I've set the aperture at 7.1 to increase sharpness and uh, now I'm going to just set the shutter speed and I just check the histogram on the back of the camera and um, that's looking pretty good at uh, 800th of a second so uh, let's take another shot we just have to be careful with our framing because I've got a fixed focal length I'm not saying don't use social media, it definitely plays its part to get that feedback, but we don't want to tie our worth and our enjoyment on the likes of others. That just leads to disappointment. So this here is the mighty ironbark. It's an amazing eucalypt species that we have in Australia. It's got this furrowed dark uh, bark on the side of it. And this is the resource for a lot of honey eaters. When this tree flowers, it attracts birds from all around. That's what the parrots are here to feed on, feeding on the uh, flowers at the top of these trees. Unfortunately, this tree is also extremely good for fence posts. And when we first, when Europeans first got here, they chopped the majority of it down and there's only very little of this habitat left. Um, this is one of the best examples of ironbark forest in Australia. I just spotted a little antichinus on the ground. So we've got this little, got this little yellow-footed antichinus. Oh, 
<laughs> he took a look at me and then he's run off. Pretty cool little guy. I think he, um, I think it lives in the base of that tree. So that was pretty cool. Just spotted him out of the corner of my eye. Not the best shot in the world, but still pretty cool. At least it's something. <laughs> So I think something else that's going on with wildlife photography is just the thrill of the chase. I just saw that little antichinus. My heart rate's probably gone up. I've zeroed in on it and I've walked towards it. I've got some photos and I got a bit of a rush from that. <laughs> I think that's what keeps us coming back. Maybe through evolutionary means, we've got this instinct to hunt or chase and to get prey. And that's probably why so many people enjoy hunting. Um, I'm glad I hunt with a camera and not a gun, but it probably gives us that same feeling, you know, that that same rush that keeps us coming back is that <laughs> thrill of the chase. And just in regards to um, the hunting thing, there's a wonderful comment left um, by Guy Jackson. He said, I was a hunter for many years. Uh, one day my 12 year old daughter asked me if we really needed the meat. The animals were just so much fun to look at. <laughs> so from that day on, he put down the gun and picked up a camera and he said that his daughter's now 40. So in the last 28 years, he's been uh, photographing wildlife instead of killing it. So it goes to show that maybe you're a hunter yourself and uh, you want something else. Uh, you don't want to kill those animals, perhaps pick up a camera and do this instead. All right, that was cool. All right, we'll move on. So I think I've just stumbled across a feeding party. I've seen a brown tree creeper and some babblers here. So we'll see what happens. I think it's a golden whistler, I think, of some sort. It's just, stay there, stay there. Okay, so we've got a female whistler that's feeding and she's jumping around in these trees and she landed on this stick here and I've taken a couple of shots. So the exposure is very difficult in here because we've got dappled sunlight. Um, I'm actually at ISO 1600, wide open 5.6 and that only gives me a shutter speed of 3 20th of a second which is very low to be shooting handheld so um, who knows whether these shots will turn out but um, that was pretty cool and that's often the case you know you just wander around and you see a bird fly in front of you try and figure out what it is, where it's going to go, track its behaviour, and away you go. Wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> no way we're going to get a photo, but it's very cool. So recently I asked my wonderful audience why they love wildlife photography, and I just want to share a comment from Daniel Erickson and he said, to get that brief peace of mind, to connect to nature, to just listen and observe. It's not just about capturing something in a photo, it's about that time during golden hour when everything slowly comes alive. And that's kind of just happened here. We've had all these swallows flying around, I had a whistler, I had some babblers, it just came alive, you know, and I took advantage of that and we managed to get a photo. And, and that's just one of the joyous parts of, of wildlife photography is just being out here in nature and just soaking it all in. The, one of the most common themes throughout all those comments was just how wildlife photography helps those that have had some sort of illness, whether that be mental health or physical or whatever it might be. So it's overwhelming how many people reached out to me and <laughs> said wildlife photography literally saved their lives. It just helped the struggles of everyday life become a little bit easier knowing they could have an escape out in nature. I think Big Bird Fishing put it best when they said, it takes your mind away from the stresses in life and makes you focus on the present. <laughs> The only danger with focusing on the present is I often lose track of time and I forget to message my wife and let her know that I'm still alive. So uh, make sure you let your partner know where you are at all times. And I've just got another comment that I think is worth sharing um, from user Solar System in relation to mental health. He said this, and this is a really good comment, picking up wildlife photography in the last year has given me a genuine sense of purpose a driving force to get outside, move around, learn and feel accomplished. It's taught me a lot about myself and what makes me happy. Thanks for sharing that comment and I think many of us can relate to that, that's for sure. 
I think this comment shows the therapeutic value of wildlife photography and hopefully encourages you, if you have your own struggles, to perhaps pick up that camera, pull it out of the cupboard and head out to your local nature reserve and just feel the benefits of being out here. <laughs> Frybird, that funny call. All right, let's go and see what else we can find. It's a little willy wagtail on the ground here. Uh, Willie's back on the ground. We'll try and get one of them on the ground. I think what today is showing is just that bird photography or wildlife photography is a real challenge. And I think that's potentially why we do it. Um, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. But wildlife photography is really, really hard and it's a real challenge and you can't expect to get great shots every single time. And I think it's that challenge that draws a lot of us to this. It's when you put in all that work, you put in all that time, when you do get a shot, oh boy, it just makes it all worthwhile, you know, and it gives you that, that real rush. But Part of the joy of it is just how hard it is and I'm finding that today I've probably walked a few kilometres now wandering around I can see birds high in the trees but they're just not coming down and look that's what happens when you just walk around you know often you'll see in my videos I set things up I use water I use mealworms use different things to get the birds down to eye level so um, if you're struggling like I am today don't fear you're not alone um, anybody who comes into these conditions like this is going to struggle but I'm not here to get the award-winning shots I'm just here to enjoy myself and to be in nature and whilst filming this video I really haven't thought about anything else you know it's been a few hours now and I'm just wandering around photographing what I see sharing it with you where else would you want to be I really love John G's comment when he said, I'm too old to skydive or race motorcycles, but wildlife photography gives me that same adrenaline rush. <laughs> and I concur, John, I definitely concur. I, and I like Connor's comment that he said, nature photography is just such a nice blend of calming and exciting. <laughs> and, and he's right, you know, you can wait for hours and nothing happens and then all of a sudden it's on. And that's what makes the highs good, I suppose, is when they do happen, it's, it's full on. So I really like this comment from Christopher, he says, <laughs> um, he sums up wildlife photography perfectly. I don't know exactly why I do it, but I know it makes me happy. And that's the main thing. I think many of us probably can't quite pinpoint what it is, but we know that when we do it, it brings a smile to our face. And I guess one other thing is, whilst I was on my own today, and I do enjoy being on my own and uh, finding birds, it's also an enjoyable thing to do with a friend or a few friends. I've been on so many trips and had 
so many great memories with my mates and I highly encourage you if you haven't already is try and find a like-minded person that enjoys wildlife photography as much as you and you'll find um, I actually enjoy the cup of coffee afterwards and just chatting about photography that's a real highlight as well or on the trip home in the car I need to probably put a disclaimer and a warning there that wildlife photography is addictive <laughs> once you start it's very hard to stop and once you start you're going to develop gear acquisition syndrome you're going to get comparison fatigue and you also get brand blindness to whatever it is the camera that you have so be warned <laughs> at the little yellow-footed antichinus we've got honey eaters we've got tree creepers <laughs> it's all happening i don't really care if i get a photo to be honest i'm just happy to be here and there's wildlife going about their business i can't get the smile off my face that's <laughs> just what it's all about <laughs> Oh look, the little yellow footed any kindness has come out. Oh, what a cute little guy. <laughs> he came out onto the log and go, he's going, what the heck, who is this? <laughs> oh, that was pretty cool. Well, that was a lot of fun, you know. That was the, one of the excitement times, the antichinus, the birds, I've just chased after it. And I had a really good time, you know. At, and I don't really care if the shots came out or not. When I'm in the moment with my camera, hitting that shutter, um, <laughs> the rest of the world just disappears and I'm, I'm having fun. But you know, that's what it's all about. It's about just getting out there, enjoying yourself, regardless of the result. I've had a wonderful time this afternoon. Even though I didn't get to see the parrot and I didn't get as many shots as I would have liked, I wouldn't trade this for anything and I highly encourage you to grab your camera, get out into the field and let me know what you love about wildlife photography. What do you enjoy about it? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, obviously give it that thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Thanks to all my lovely members that support the channel every month. I really do appreciate it. Until the next video, take care and see you later.